One octanol. One octanol is a molecule made up of these parts. Eight carbon atoms, 18 hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom put together like this. A more streamlined way of depicting this molecule is like this. It's called the skeletal structure. The end of each line and the kink in each zig or zag represents a carbon atom. And the hydrogen atoms on the, each carbon atom are implied. One octanol occurs in nature mostly after it's used to make the fragrance that we smell at, in citrus. So in oranges and orange flowers, in grapefruits, the smell that we have of those citrus comes from a molecule that's made from one octanol. And humans use that same one octanol in a similar way. We'll put it in perfumes to add a citrusy flavor or body care products like lotions. One octanol by itself though, not a derivative of it, which smells like citrus, one octanol by itself is used to mimic a really important barrier in your body called the blood-brain barrier. This here is a cross-section of an artery in, your, in a human brain. Around the artery you can see this light circle and that's called a, the blood-brain barrier. It's a circle of fatty tissue that prevents watery things inside your blood from getting through into your brain. It's a layer that protects your brain because water and oil don't mix. The oiliness of this blood-brain barrier is almost the same as the oiliness of one octanol. So in pharmaceuticals, Pharmaceutical research, pharmaceutical companies will use one octanol to see whether a drug will be able to move through the blood-brain barrier and get to your neurons to treat neurological diseases like dementia or Alzheimer's. So one octanol is used as a way to gauge how effectively a medication may be able to reach somebody's brain or other fatty tissue in their body. Safety with one octanol when you're considering safety, a nice visual summary are these fire diamonds or safety squares. Let's look at the, each of these one at a time. The blue square tells you how dangerous the molecule is for your health. It's on a scale from zero to four, where zero represents no health hazard and four represents a quick death. One octanol can lead to skin and eye irritation, and the eye irritation can be severe, severe. nausea, headache, and shortness of breath. To protect against skin irritation, you want to wear gloves while handling one octanol. To protect against eye irritation, you want to make sure you wear safety goggles that have um, protection on the sides. To protect against nausea, headache, and shortness of breath, you want to make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area, preferably a fume hood. The red square or diamond represents it, the molecule's flammability. This also is on a scale from zero to four, where in this case, zero means the molecule will not burn, and four means it's a flammable gas at room temperature. As a two, you would want to make sure you keep one octanol away from heat, flame, or sparks. It does burn, and when it burns, it releases toxic vapors. The yellow diamond tells you about the molecule's instability or reactivity. This is also on a scale from zero to four, where zero tells you that the molecule will not explode when shaken, and four tells you it will explode at room temperature if disturbed. Because one octanol has a zero there, it means that it's not going to explode as you handle it in the laboratory. The white diamond at the bottom is empty, which means there are no special considerations when you're working with one octanol. Let's try to visualize one octanol. As we saw, you can use the skeletal formula as a streamlined way of picturing each of these carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms in one octanol. But this is a two-dimensional structure of a three-dimensional molecule. You can see here each of those carbons is tetrahedral. The oxygen at the right is bent. And there's another aspect of the three-dimensional molecule that you can see here. And that's the electrical charge, which represents the stickiness of the molecule. Oxygen, this red ball on the right, is very electronegative. So it pulls electrons to itself and becomes slightly negative. That's depicted visually with the red color. Any atom it's bonded to, like this hydrogen and to a lesser extent the carbon here, 
loses that electron density and becomes slightly positive. That's represented by the blue color here. The green color tells you that this molecule, this part of the molecule is neutral. Each of the bonds in one octanol is not a static line. Rather, each of these bonds can twist and rotate while the molecule twirls and tumbles, and the bonds all vibrate around 10 to the 13th times per second, 10 trillion times per second. To help you visualize what the molecule looks like as a living, breathing, dynamic thing, here's a simulation of the molecule with the bonds rotating and vibrating. We've played that simulation at a speed where you can track the changes in the molecule easily. But compared to molecules, we live over enormous time spans. In one second, those bonds can vibrate around 10 trillion times. Let's speed those vibrations up just 20 times. Now let's speed the vibrations up 400 times. If you take those vibrations and you speed them up 25 billion times more, you will get about how fast the molecules are moving at room temperature. One drop of one octanol, which is a clear liquid at room temperature, contains about 200 quintillion molecules. That's more than the number of stars in one billion galaxies. It's so many, those molecules are so small that our eyes can't distinguish them individually. Rather, they merge together like pixels on a screen to create the experience of one octanol that we have, which is of a clear liquid at room temperature in the laboratory. And you can see that clear liquid here. When one octanol gets together as a population of huge galaxies worth of molecules, those populations take on their own properties when those molecules come together as a community. Those community properties of this molecule are called the physical properties of one octanol. You can look up physical properties in handbooks like the CRC handbook on the left or the Merck index on the right. One physical property is predicting the state of the molecule, whether the molecule is solid, liquid, or gas. And that depends on what temperature the molecules add. For one octanol, it, one octanol is a solid below 3 degrees Fahrenheit, a liquid between 3 and 383 degrees Fahrenheit, and a gas above 383 degrees Fahrenheit. To give you a comparison, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and boils at 212. So one octanol tends to stay liquid over a larger range than water, for example. As a scientist, you want to be able to think of these temperatures also in degrees Celsius. Compare water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So again, you're seeing that one octanol tends to stay a liquid uh, at a larger range of temperatures than water would. You can use these freezing points, what we have on the left, and boiling points that we have on the right, you can use them to separate one octanol if it's in a mixture with other molecules. You could, for example, cool the mixture until it's just cold enough that one octanol freezes out and the other molecules don't. When you separate things based on their freezing points, it's called crystallization. On the other hand, you could heat the mixture up so that only one octanol boiled and the other mo molecules didn't. You can collect the vapors just like they collect on the bottom of the lid of a spaghetti pot, drain them into another container, and you'd have the purified one octanol. When you separate molecules based on their boiling points, that's called distillation. Another physical property to consider is solubility. Solubility is important because it creates structure within a fluid. So let's think about the solubility of one octanol in water at room temperature. Solubility, whether molecules mix or not, really boils down to how many charges there are spread out on a molecule. Water has charges on every atom in the molecule, as you can see in these electrostatic potential maps, these colored versions of these molecules. One octanol has charges on only a small part of the molecule. Most of the molecule is neutral. That means that water will tend to want to stick to it other molecules of water. 
that have other charges rather than stick to one octanal. But it will want to stick to this end just a little bit. And so one octanol will only dissolve in water just a little bit. The exact amount is 0.3 grams of one octanol will dissolve in water per liter of water. A final physical property to think about for one octanol is its density. Density is important because it creates structure based on sinking and floating. Objects that are more dense sink and objects that are less dense float. That separates things like the core, mantle, and crust of the earth or like the solid and oil of peanut butter. For one octanol, the density of one octanol is 0 0.83 grams per milliliter. Compare that with the density of water. The density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. That means that when you combine one octanol and water, water will sink and one octanol will float on top of it. So hopefully this video has given you a short introduction and a better understanding of one octanol.